welcome to the Covert Report with Susan Lindauer. Today, my guest is Chip Tatum, and we have a great show for you. Chip Tatum is a very famous CIA cowboy. Could pretty much say the movie Rambo was based on his life, on his actual experiences. He, he was one of the, 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 the pilots flying cocaine into Mena, Mena Air, Arkansas, collected uh, tapes, audio tapes mostly. I, I don't know if any videotapes, he'll, he'll clarify that in a minute, but audio tapes of his conversations with people like Bill Clinton, George Bush. He was part of the Pegasus assassination team, the, the, internal, audit, the, the internal affairs control of the CIA. And he has, has a fascinating, fascinating life. When he refused to uh, an, a direct order to assassinate Ross Perot, George he par- ended up parted co- parting company with George Bush Sr. He let everybody know that he had his tapes of of the conversations with with various various high ranking officials in this in government, and he said, "I'm going my own separate way." And they didn't like that very much. They decided that he had too much information. They he, they wanted to 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 catch him and stop him from making any disclosures. He ended up in prison. This is this is just an extraordinary story. Uh, Chip Tatum, I have I have I given a, a direct a, a summary of your work of your life with with any degree of accuracy. I hope. Yeah, I, I would correct uh, one point in it. Uh, we we weren't ordered in Pegasus to assassinate Rospero, only to neutralize him, and we could do that uh, through intimidation. And I might add that uh, the same same mode of operation is being used right now against Trump. Uh, his family was just uh, received several uh, intimidation modes of intimidation to try to get Trump to leave. So it you know with the cabal with Bush and the boys. It, their attitude is if it if it ain't broken, <laughs> don't fix it. And as far as videotapes, I wish we'd have had the technology back then that we have now, uh, because uh, videotapes would be great. We do have I do have several, uh, well, more than several audio tapes of conversations, and uh, we've included those audios with videos and and videos showing the the signed documents that. Uh, we were given for the assassinations and so forth. But you're saying that this is very much what is being used on Trump right now. Certainly is. So let's no... talk about that. Let's talk about that in more detail. Give the background on that order against Ross Perot. Well, per- Perot and Bush had been enemies forever and ever, for, for a long, very long time. Um, and uh, Bush was fed up with Perot, and Perot, naturally running as an independent, was pulling pulling votes from him. Uh, he wanted him out. He wanted him out. He wanted him out now. And in our, in our meeting in Jupiter Island, uh, he tasked the, the, the teams were, were led, uh, the OSGs were led by military officers. You had North uh, running one side. I was running one side. And uh, an ex-general was running one side. So we were receiving taskings depending on, on our uh, talents uh, for various operations. One of those operations was to get uh, get Perot off off the ballot, out of the race, so so that he wasn't pulling all those votes from Bush. My my criteria in working with uh, with the OSGs was okay. I'll I'll accept this and I'll do this, but uh, never within the boundaries of the United States and against U.S. citizens. And they oh sure sure fine fine fine, uh, but they started. They started giving us uh, several operations within the boundaries of the United States, and I would, I would uh, turn them down every time. When, when he turned to me and I, I said, "I'm not going to do this," he said, "Bullshit, you aren't. I told you you're going to do it. You get out there and you do it." And that's when I stood up. I pulled out my briefcase. I got my little uh, VCR tape that we'd, I'd made with my insurance policy. Dropped it on the desk uh, and walked out of the Jupiter Island meeting. I, although I did not uh, accept that uh, tasking, one of the other commanders did, and it's history. They they intimidated Ross Perot uh, by using one of his using his daughter and her wedding coming up. No doubt that they talked to Trump first and told him, you know, if you don't get out, we're going to start coming after your family. So that's that's just the beginning. Those those entities, if that doesn't scare him out, then they'll take it up a level. 
Uh, and, you know, the Bushes are involved. They have Neil Bush now as their front man standing out there in front of everything. The same Neil Bush that met with, uh, met with uh, Hinckley uh, the night or a couple of days before Hinckley shot uh, Reagan. So, <laughs> Wow, that's right. Yeah, that right. Neil Bush is another bad guy. The whole Bush family are just there. It's like a, a crime syndicate. When I, when I was in New Hampshire, I'd taken 5,000 uh, excerpts from the Tatum Chronicles uh, with me and uh, a translation, uh, a transcript of the conversation in the back of my aircraft in Honduras where uh, uh, two, two of Clinton and uh, Bush's men were sitting in the back talking back and forth. Uh, and said that the, there were some monies missing and they were going to take care of uh, uh, things to go after the people, uh, speaking of uh, Barry Seal, and that uh, they'd have Jeb handle it out of Columbia. Uh, so, so Jeb's dead in the middle of it, and I passed out 5,000 of those in New Hampshire. Well, and let's be clear, you were charged with treason because you exposed Iran-Contra. Yes, among other things, and because I walked. You know, you just don't walk away from black operations, and and I knew that. <laughs> but you know, yep. you just get you just get to a point where you have to say enough is enough and do what you're going to do, uh, because that's it. I'm not I'm not going to do it anymore. I'm not not with you anymore. What you're doing, I realize what you're doing is not in the best interest of the United States. It's in your own best interest and has nothing to do with our national security and has everything to do with your pocketbooks. Yeah, and you were, this was generating private revenues for the elite political families. Sure, and for black operations too. But, uh, you know, in 76, uh, Congress pulled funding from black, op- black operations and said any funding has to come, you know, black ops monies uh, – uh, didn't have to be reported through Congress. They would just pull it from different budgets for black ops, the so CIA could, or DIA. And uh, in 76, Congress changed that, and uh, all black ops, all uh, operations, intelligence operations, had to be uh, approved and funded through Congress. Well, Congress can't keep a damn secret. Who? Well, how can you even expect them to keep a secret when you ask for money to go do a black operation? So... Uh, they decided to start uh, making their own money. Well, they'd already been making their own money. If you look at Air America and Air when we were flying down there. But uh, So they just continued in doing it and uh, continue it up through today. Look, you people think that Afghanistan, <laughs> we need to be there. You're wrong. We need to be there. And the only thing our soldiers are doing is standing and guarding uh, the, the poppy fields and, and, and the bad guys' uh, little businesses over there. Our soldiers have orders not to interfere with the uh, warlords and their businesses, whether it be uh, child prostitution, uh, human trafficking, uh, the heroin production. We are not to interfere with any of that. And uh, because of that, uh, heroin use in the United States has grown exponentially, over a 1,000%. And why? Because it's funding the cabals and black operations. Look, these cabals, these, these evil people, uh, power, they, they, they're just hungry for power and they can never get enough power. And they equate power with how much money they have. And, you know, they'll go against one another just to grow that power. I know. I, we've, we ran several missions against uh, uh, politicians who were part of the cabal, who were part of the enterprise, uh, taking them down so that others could grow. Let's, let, let me give you an example something we did during Honduras, during the Iran-Contra conflict in Nicaragua. You know, we, there we were in Nicaragua. Uh, Ortega was there, uh, and he was, he was the elected, democratically elected president. Uh, however, he wanted to nationalize the bananas, basically, is what it came down to. And uh, the, you had Del Monte, you had all these huge uh, U.S. corporations there that uh, needed pro- need of protection, and so we decided we were going to take Ortega out, and so we formed Contra uh, Contra camps and brought in all these ex Samosan uh, thugs, uh, promising them monies, promising them everything if they'd go and, and, uh, and training and arms uh, if, if they'd uh, form a rebellion against uh, uh, Daniel Ortega in Nicaragua. 
we based that out of Honduras, and part, that was part of the Iran-Contra thing. Uh, part of what we did is we traded off, uh, un under North, he had the great idea, and we traded off uh, guns for drugs. Uh, we were able to get uh, for every M16 and 1,000 and rounds of ammunition, we'd get uh, a kilo of cocaine. So, uh, And we would ship that back to the United States. Barry Seal was one of the primary shippers. Well, well, well documented. So here, here we have this big uh, conflict going on in, in Honduras, and uh, Ortega, you know, the, the, the thugs just didn't, we really didn't want to win there because it was too lucrative for them to have their, their, their drug, guns for drugs trade-off going on and uh, getting the cocaine back here. But it came to a point where when Hassenfoss, uh, his aircraft crashed, and the, the violation of the Boland Act came, in, came into play and with public knowledge, uh, to Congress that we had to uh, do something uh, to finally end it. So what they decided to do is they brought in Pegasus. We went to Ortega. We told Ortega, okay, it's time for you to hold, uh, for you to leave office and hold elections. He said, no, I'm not going to do it. I, and, and so the message was given to him, you're going to hold elections uh, or else. And so we gave, we gave him two weeks. And he just ignored it. He said, yeah, what are you going to do, you know? So we went back and we said, okay, this is your cousin. We showed him a, a picture of Rafael, his cousin, and said, your cousin's going to die in two weeks if you don't announce elections. And he said, uh, okay, okay, yeah, sure. He didn't believe us. Uh, so what he did is he put a battalion, he put, he put, he put him in uh, uh, El Ocotal, uh, a battalion uh, military base, and protected him with a whole battalion of military. Uh, two weeks to the day, Two missiles were shot from a from a Loach uh, helicopter, U.S. Loach helicopter, based out of Honduras and El Salvador, uh, were shot into that uh, compound, killing Rafael. Wow! A week, a week later, a week later, or Ortega was approached and told, "Now, you're next. There's nothing you can do to protect yourself. We will get you." And two weeks later, he announced elections. So what can they do to Trump? <laughs> Sky's the limit, dear. The, the, the cabal has, has absolutely no qualms about killing family members, killing children, killing whoever they want to get, to get their way. So, and they have very, very well-trained uh, operatives. You know, you've met some of them. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I do. I, I, they are, they're ferocious ferocious operatives i mean and they're just... unknown they're they're wandering assets in every country in the world we have wandering assets sitting there well trained well funded just waiting just waiting uh to to get into the game so that's right wow well I, you know but to take down a presidential candidate uh that that requires a little bit you know like you said they went after his son you're sending the white powder to his son. Um, you know, I, I just, you know, he's had so many wives. I, I just, I, I just, I think that, 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 that he is, is, is pretty much a Teflon candidate in the sense that he is not afraid. 